So I feel it's safe to say that I have an obsession with food. I mean, yeah, pretty obvious. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people also enjoy food, and it can be more than just a manner which to live by. It's more, to me, it's nice and all that, but it's a whole nother level when I can drive like two and a half hours to LA just for a taste of Voodoo Donuts, triple chocolate penetration donut. It's just, <laughs> it's just really good. <laughs> All the while, just completing like half a dozen like other uh, bakeries and donut shops while I'm driving past just to meet just to beat traffic. Uh, I really don't like to use the word obsession. It kind of makes it sound like I have a problem. So I prefer to think of it more as like a loving attachment to food. And I could really say that I have like a superior palate, I have a refined taste, and you know, all Gordon Ramsay level and shit, and that I only eat the finest cuts of meat, the freshest vegetables, and sip on only the creamiest chocolate milk. I wrote this when I was 18, by the way, so I couldn't, t I had no idea what alcohol was, so. <laughs> but in reality, as much as I love fine food, um, I'm still the girl who in 10th grade went dumpster diving for half a pizza and a melted chocolate ice cream. So, really, obsession with chocolate and I uh, haven't changed since much then. Um, definitely that person that went by the 5 to 15 second rule, uh, give or take, and will absolutely steal candy from babies. <laughs> I think that I just have a deep appreciation for food, not only in how it tastes, but how it can be used in relationships, in our interaction with others. I love how it can be passed down and slow roasted through centuries of family traditions, or quickly whipped up in a brilliant infamy uh, for a simple 3 a.m. snack. It's something that we all need to survive, yet very often we depend on it our fr for friends or loved ones, and it sometimes gives complete strangers control over our lives. My case in point, fast food workers. Now the fast food industry and its workers, which is often considered to be the lowest rung of the ladder of, the career, of career, um, are given so much power in what everyone else puts in their mouths. And surprise, surprise, I have been on this lowest rung. Uh, still am currently. Now, uh, a little less than a year ago, I got a job at one of these fast food places. And for legal reasons, I can't say their name, but let's just call them Schwendies. <laughs> and while working at Schwendy's, I had a pretty easy task of preparing sandwiches uh, and salads and to make the fries. Just really easy stuff that, you know, uh, too simple for most people and mine throbbingly boring, often leaving me to wander with my feet and mine just going around the restaurant. And so I got into the addictive habit of customer watching. Sometimes I would spend half my shift just watching the moms too tired to make dinner or the jogger just stopping by to have that tiny cheat meal of a large combo fries. But for the most part, it was just hungry people and the job was okay. I'll get the occasional asshole who's in a rush, but usually just try to brush it off. It's been about a week so, since I started and I learned how to cook chicken, wash lettuce. I've cut myself twice with a deli slicer, almost started a grease fire, uh, but was getting the hang of it. And I already made my first work friend a sweet but super trash talking girl named Sarah who work, took orders in the front. But one afternoon I was alone for about an hour at the salad station and was getting a bit creative uh, with the construction of lettuce wraps and trying to find new and interesting ways to make sandwiches look a little more artistic and interesting. As I, as I said, pretty boring, especially when your only company in the back of a kitchen is squashed cabbage leaves and squishy tomato and smelly cheese. But that afternoon, Sarah walked over and told me about a special order. She said, hey, Aaron, a uh, customer just came in and asked for a salad with no leaves. <laughs> me being new, uh, thought this was just an average order that I hadn't memorized or just a prank. And I panicked and said, they just want no spinach leaves, right? She like, looked at Sarah, looked at me all confused and said, I think they don't want any lettuce or spinach leaves at all. Me, wait, they just want carrots, tomato, and chicken. I question, a little confused. And I asked why, she said, hell if I know. And after that nonsense of making a no salad salad, which I guess is a thing, but I mean, who goes out there to stop at this delicious Swendies, uh, known for their amazing 
ice, not Frosties, and go- orders a salad, and then tries to t- and takes the time to ask for no vegetables on it. The request definitely uh, got a little too extra for me, and made me question how insane people got with their food. And there was a super, it continued, because there was a super busy lunch rush one day. The line was out the door, drive through was packed, and all the grills and fryers were going, food was nonstop, and it felt and smelled like it was inside of a microwave. But then no one ever bothers to clean, just that add that effect. Uh, I was at the fry station that day, and the entire front of my apron and pants were covered in a shiny grease foam <laughs> with salt. That, plus the, he- the very bright overhead light had me worried that I was gonna pass out from heat stroke. And I noticed Sarah coming toward our kitchen. In her hand, she showed me one of the grilled sandwiches that we make. It looked fine. I thought maybe I had forgotten something or it was overcooked. And she said, no, it just wasn't cooked right. And it looked fine. I offered to make her another one. Now a little history on this grilled chicken sandwiches real quick. It's delicious. I don't know if you guys have tried this. And I'm the first to admit most of the food here is crap. It's this really good, like, fresh grilled chicken on a bed of lettuce, uh, soft toast grilled bun. Um, it's really the only food I eat here besides some chocolate chip cookies and, again, unnamed, unnamed uh, chocolate shake. But anyway, the ridiculous thing about this is about to unfold. So three minutes after I made another chicken sandwich, just in case I had burned the last one or something, Sarah walked in with a look that says, strap in, this is going to go downhill really quick. Sarah said, the customer doesn't want it because it has dark grill lines on it. In the back of my mind, I'm overhearing, does she want a grilled chicken with no sign it's been grilled? <laughs> I mean, the name and the picture of the food are on the menu. <laughs> it's a grilled chicken. It's gonna have grill marks on it. I was, I just looked at her and said, no. I can't, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it again. Not when that's the problem. And Sarah replied, I know it's weird, but the lady, she, that's just what she wants. She says she knows chicken. And I'm so frustrated at this point. <sighs> I'm just so frustrated at this point and also wanting to die at laughter how ridiculous this person is. But Sarah is an awesome person and one of my few work friends and she went out, told the customer said nothing was wrong with her grilled chicken, and encouraged her to try nuggets again, saving me from a total mental breakdown. <laughs> and a few months of working and like, getting more used to things, uh, recovering from that grease fire I almost started, I actually got the order right and done on time, started making, out, making some new friends, uh, going out with people occasionally. All right. problem when you don't print stuff out beforehand that's on me <laughs> getting used to everything no, getting to know more people at, at work starting uh, chicken nugget fights in the back and there'd still be an occasional customer from hell that evokes all fear and fast food workers but this particular hot summer day where my co-workers and I had met a demon in a blue Honda had actually had actually started off good it was a nice day it was a busy morning rush, but nothing too crazy. The customers were in a hurry, but mostly polite. It was around one when things started to go downhill. Lunch crowd was beginning to pick up four or five cars in the drive through uh, Our main counter was pretty, was pretty packed as well. I was assembling and wrapping sandwiches. Again, my coworker Sarah was taking orders in the drive through out in the streets to just get it done faster. And I was working on a very particular order that wanted extra pickles when I heard three loud, distinct car horns, tires screeching, and then silence. Thinking someone had just gotten a bit impatient about the cars in front of them, them, I let them go. But then heard the back door slam, heavy breathing, to which the other coworkers and I turned to see, and it was Sarah, clearly distraught. I went over to her and asked what happened, and with a shaky breath, she told everyone. A woman had pulled up, and instead of just directly talking to her, uh, like a decent person, she asked her son in the driver's seat, uh, who then relayed everything to what she just said. And then when the customer then began to complain loudly about the wait time, which was three minutes, we have a timer on the front screen, so I could tell. Uh, call, uh, complained at Sarah's lack of inability to perform basic tasks like remembering her order and the poor customer service of our store. 
when in reality, Sarah's just repeating the order back like we do for everyone. Uh, after which, uh, this she-devil had changed her order twice, yelling at Sarah each time, and then proceeded to throw water in her face, call her a stupid bitch, and then speed to the front, almost running over her foot in the process. I asked if she was okay. Uh, Sarah nodded, but was shaking a little bit, and we dealt and laughed with food customers in the past, but this kind of got to her. And this whole series of events took place relatively quickly and without a second thought, I jumped into action. This was my friend's honor and that of fast food workers everywhere. I had to do something. <laughs> and if I wasn't blinded by anger and this stupid fucking bright lights, I would have half expected a light bulb to pop over my head at the time. I knew that Blue Honda had rushed forward, not leaving the, fa not leaving the drive through line, just pulling up in front to probably complain to a manager. So I hurried before the car left, and I quickly headed over to the grill catch bin, since it had yet to be cleared out. If you guys don't know what a grill catch bin is, it's, a, it's right where they dump all the grease slime, ash, charcoal, burnt bits of food, just anything that's like <laughs> that, that you could think of. So I took that, and what was the order that our manager ended up taking for this uh, customer? filled the spot where it should have been filled with uh, fries with instead uh, a bit from the grease trap, some old eggs from this morning, and pickle brine, which I had accidentally spilled in there. <laughs> I boxed that up, finished putting in the sandwich, added these special limited edition ingredients, and delicately wrapped everything in a totally unsuspicious bag. I watched it get sent out, and that witch with acrylic nails grabbed it and sped away. <laughs> Thanks, come again. I think people tend to forget how much control fast food workers have over their food. And for the most time, we really do want you to enjoy it. It's a low paying job, but you know, pays our bills and it's good for a reason. We spend time, even the most mild, but sometimes even the most mild manners and appreciative food workers can snap. So please, please be nice to us and we'll be nice to your food. <laughs> Thank you.